Why do you think rolling dice is so cathartic? Why, yes, of course, because it enables us to shoot bolters at aliens and save our plastic minis' lives. But can you get good at rolling dice? I'm Unerator Benji, and this is The Grim Dark. So, the fact is, if you learn how probability works, then you could turn your so-called bad luck upside down and learn the magic that is Math Hammer. Don't let the name scare you off, though. Yes, there's math involved, but I'm by no means a math magician myself. So these here sermons will be an exercise in making things as easy to understand as humanly possible and setting you up for success. One thing that should go without saying, and that makes things a little bit easier, is that we only roll one type of dice on a 40k table. One with six sides, and yes, that includes those D3 rolls, smart ass. What that affords us is the luxury of memorising only a few key facts and formulas to be good at this shizzle. Now, there are many ways that we can benefit from understanding a bit more about probability, but the most notable and advantageous way is the subject of today's first Math Hammer episode, and that is to estimate how many wounds one of your units on average would deal to a target. And so we are going to break this little procedure down into the three steps you'll all be familiar with. Assessing the probability that you will succeed on your to hit roll, your subsequent to wound roll, and finally your opponent failing their save roll. The first two follow the same principle. You want the good thing to happen, aka your minimum target number, be face up on the dice once it's done its rolling thing. However, at this point we need to have a rudimentary understanding of fractions and know that the odds of rolling any of the facings on the dice is 1 over 6. This can of course be converted into a percentage but that's for another day. Fractions are the choice of math here because well, you just have to trust me it's easier than converting to decimals and percentages. So let's role play at this point and run through an example. You're about to shoot a bolt gun outside of rapid fire range that's attached to a space marine in the general direction of a former brother marine that has fallen to chaos. With a ballistic skill of 3 up, we can fairly easily extrapolate that there are 4 target numbers that will put a smile on our face. 3, 4, 5 and 6. A grand total of 4 of the possible 6 outcomes or 4 over 6. If you then simplify this fraction, and if you don't know how to do that, I suggest you go look it up, you get 2 over 3, or a 2 in 3 chance of succeeding. With that first total over, we've now got a roll to wound, and with the bolt gun strength of 4 against the Chaos Marine's toughness of 4, we need a 4 up to get to the last hurdle. Now, Four ups are the easiest of the bunch, because you can split straight down the middle, a 3 over 6 chance, better known as 1 in 2. Before we go any further though, I should explain that once we distill the chance of success into a fraction for each of these three steps, we're then going to need to multiply them all together to get the total number of wounds expected. And this part I'm going to lend a hand with, as it's more straightforward than you probably realise. To multiply fractions, all you need to do is multiply the top numbers, the numerators, together, and then do the same for the bottom numbers, the denominators, which in this example sees you multiplying the top numbers of 2 from the hit roll and 1 from the wound roll, which I'm reasonably sure is 2 and then multiply the bottom numbers of 3 and 2 respectively, totaling 6. This, after all said and done, leaves you with a 2 over 6, or simplified 1 in 3 chance of happy facing it and passing the dice to your opponent for armour saves. And so to the save we go. Your average heretic Astartes in his not so shiny power armour will be rocking a 3 up armour save. And because the bolt gun has no AP, it's going to stay that way during this experiment. But the difference this time is that you're rooting for the dice roll to fail. 
So in order to apply a uniform logic throughout this process, we have to modify our formula somewhat. Here, the mathematical complement rule states that the combined probability of something happening alongside the probability of the same thing not happening will always be 1 or 100%. Therefore, in this example, we need a sum that starts at 1 and subtracts the possibility of your opponent succeeding at their dice roll. In other words, 1 minus the 2 over 3 we already calculated from the earlier 3-up hit roll. Now this long and winding road leads us to a final total of a 1 over 3 chance of your opponent failing the roll. Now if that all sounds a little bit too complicated, then you can also decide to throw uniform logic out the window and just count the die facings that you do want to see. In this instance, either a 1 or 2. And as we know from earlier, if we want to see just one of two of the six numbers on the dice, then we get to the same simplified fraction of 1 over 3. And there you have your three steps of a combat roll, and now you calculate the probability of success for each. But we still don't know how many wounds on average this little spurt of gunfire will result in. Well, that's because we haven't gone full multiplication on all three fractions yet. As I've already taught you then, we just need to take the 2 over 3 from the hit roll, the 1 over 2 for the wound roll, and the 1 over 3 for the save roll, and press multiply. So we take the top numbers and go 2 times 1 times 1 is 2, and take the bottom numbers and go 3 times 2 times 3 is 18 leaving you with a sum total of 2 over 18, which gets simplified to 1 over 9. So, after all that math, can you believe it? We have our odds of applying a wound. 1 in 9. 1 in 9. However, this whole time we've been aspiring to find out how many actual wounds we would be applying. The problem is that anything under 1 is, well, kind of pointless. So how do we do this same calculation when we're talking about multiple shots from or swings with a weapon? Well, you simply add the number of shots to the very front of that little multiplication exercise we just did. So let's just say we were talking about 10 shots being fired. The new formula would be 10 times 2 over 3 times the 1 over 2 and times the 1 over 3. Or what is much easier, 10 times the 1 over 9 we just got to. Once again, this multiplication is a lot easier than you might think. When it comes to whole numbers multiplying with fractions, all you need to do is multiply the big number, in this instance the 10, by the top number of the fraction, getting you to a grand total of 10 over 9, aka more than 1. It's at this point that you should remember that fractions apply the same principles as division. So if you take the top number and divide it by the bottom number, you have your grand total in projected wounds. Phew. <laughs> that was chucking hard, man. But we did it. Ten shots are going to bag us just over a wound, baby. Man, that felt good. But look, it doesn't matter if that was too much like hard work for the information we got out of it. But that's because it was the first time you've done it. Once you start to memorise the odds of the most frequent rolls, you're going to see it will soon become second nature for you to do this in a matter of seconds. Now, of course, you don't want your brain to overload and be doing this every time every one of your units looks for an optimal target. 40k is a grand scale game with plenty of things to think about already. But its benefits are very clear in those certain scenarios, like when you're not sure if you can afford to split fire with different weapons in a unit, or whether you'll need more than one of your units to do catastrophic or total damage to a target. And over the course of the game, no matter how much we like to think luck always has the last say, you can make your own luck in this game, and its name is Probability. That will be all, ladies and gentlemen, for today's lesson. Whilst this was arguably the most important thing to learn when consulting the Oracle of the Math Hammer, there are many, many more topics for discussion under this fractional umbrella. 
If you like the first part of this series and you want to see more of it, please let me know in the comments below. As for now, this video has ended. <laughs>